Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker, and on today's SL show, we're gonna be, of course, going over some of the games from last night, including Luka Doncic's incredible 40-point triple-double and the historical significance of that game. We're also gonna be talking about some players that are kind of flying under the radar for their performances so far this season. And then we're gonna end it off with our headline of the day, as we always do, this one focusing on an interesting quote from D'Angelo Russell about the Minnesota Timberwolves. So about last night, we of course have to start by talking about Luka Doncic and the incredible stat line that he put up last night in a 117-110 win over the San Antonio Spurs. Luka had 42 points, 12 assists, and 11 rebounds, including the game ceiling step back three with 30 seconds left in the game. And on top of that, sorry Spurs fans, but your team continues to struggle with their sixth straight loss and their eighth in their last nine games. So first, let's talk about the historical significance of the stat line, and then we'll kind of get to what it means for Luka's season and, and the Mavs as a whole. Now, this is the very first 40-point triple-double ever in Mavericks history, and at just under 21 years old, Luka is the second youngest player in league history with a 40-point triple-double behind only LeBron James. But interestingly, LeBron in that game in which he had the youngest 40-point triple-double in league history played 47 minutes while Luka only played 35 in the game last night. And then just to cap it all off, here's a list of players in NBA history that have posted a 40-point triple-double at 21 years old or younger. Oscar Robertson, Isaiah Thomas, Magic Johnson, LeBron James, and Luka Doncic. And all this leads into the possibility that Luka continues to build his case as potentially the league MVP this season. And we talked about this in a video last week in the first real or fake episode. And someone asked me, is Luka Doncic a real MVP candidate right now? And I think that he definitely is, and he still is obviously after this performance. And the path for him was always to average like 28, eight and nine, just an incredible stat line and lead the Mavs to like a 50 win season because you have to have some team success in addition to the statistics to really challenge for an MVP. And right now he's on pace for all those things. He's fourth in the league in points per game, second in assists, and he's the only player in the entire NBA that's in the top 10 in points, rebounds, and assists. And I think this is becoming more and more of a possibility with every single game that he continues to play like this and put up these incredible numbers for a couple of reasons. One, as I said, the team success is there. As of right now, the Mavs are on pace to win 50 games, which would certainly exceed their expectations in Vegas as well as just around the league. And that would be a huge deal for his MVP case in terms of being an incredibly valuable player for the Mavericks. But also it's possible that maybe there will be some voter fatigue for the other two players that he's gonna be challenging for this award against, or at least that's the way it seems right now in James Harden and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Harden's won an MVP before, Giannis won it last year, and even though they are both putting up incredible statistical seasons, most notably Harden in terms of his points per game, Luka could get some momentum as kind of the new guy to this MVP conversation, but he has to continue to play like this, and this is becoming more and more of a real thing the further along we go in the season. Moving on now to the next game that I wanna talk about from last night, and it's time to talk about the fact that I'm worried about my Brooklyn Nets. They lost 115 to 86 last night to the Indiana Pacers in a game in which Kyrie Irving and Karis LeVert didn't play. They couldn't score the ball at all. They couldn't defend. And it just, it just wasn't a good look at all. It was a really depressing game to watch. And the issue really was offensively because that's been the one saving grace of this team to this point is their ability to score the ball with Kyrie and with LeVert and with off ball shooters because our defense has stunk all season long, but at least our offense has been able to pick that up. But now recently, like when you go look in the offensive ratings, we're pretty much right at the bottom 10 in the league in both offensive and defensive ratings, which kind of tells you that we're just not a very good team right now. Flip flopping between DeAndre Jordan and Jared Allen to start games at the center spot has been a really weird experiment and that we've been really, really bad to begin games. The off-ball shot making hasn't been there. There's been too many turnovers and there's just not enough size on the perimeter to consistently defend against good offensive teams. And they'll do just enough to start to give me some hope. Like they'll play good halves against some good teams like against the Jazz and the Nuggets last week in the which they were up big at halftime and then ended up losing the game anyway. And it's really just a consistency issue at this point. And I understand the talent level of this team. And believe me, my expectations were not that this team was going to end up winning like 50 games or something this year. But I definitely thought that we would be better than we are right now. But it's the consistency that worries me. 
as do the injuries. Karis LeVert is going to be out for the next couple of weeks. Kyrie has missed the last two games with a shoulder injury, and he has been relatively fragile over the last couple of seasons. And there's a real possibility that this thing just starts to bottom out completely if we don't get healthy in a hurry. Now, granted, the team started 6-7 and seven last year through 13 games and 8-18 and 18 overall as well before turning it around and getting to 42-40 and 40 and making the playoffs. So things can certainly turn around, and 13 games does not make a season, especially if guys start to get healthy. But I am definitely beginning to be worried about this team this season in terms of even making the playoffs because I certainly didn't expect the Charlotte Hornets to have more wins through 13 games than the Brooklyn Nets, which is where we are right now. So... I'm officially a little bit worried. And then the last game that I want to discuss is the LA Clippers taking down the Oklahoma City Thunder last night, 90 to 88. And this for me is all about the LA Clippers because I feel like this is a team that's going to continue to be overlooked. There's other teams making bigger splashes like Luka playing so well in Dallas, the Lakers having the best record in the league, even teams like Boston playing really well in the Eastern Conference. This LA Clippers team continues, I feel like, to be overlooked even though they're in LA. And in my opinion, when healthy, this is the best team in the league. Their defense they can score, they can shoot, they can defend, and even though they haven't had Paul George and Kawhi Leonard play in the same game to this point at all this season, they're 9-5 and five on the year. And honestly, I feel like even if those two guys never played in the same game for the rest of the year, this team could still get like a top five seed in the Western Conference, and they should just flip-flop those two guys. Like Kawhi should play one night and then PG and flip it back and forth all the way up until the All-Star break, and then you play them in the same game so they can get kind of used to playing together. But this team, every time I watch Watch them continues to impress me. Whether it's guys coming off the bench like Lou Williams and Montrez Hale scoring the ball, whether it's Landry Shamit scoring off the ball, whether it's Paul George or Kawhi Leonard being really good individual scorers while also playing within the team concept, and I cannot wait to see all of them together, to see these guys completely healthy, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard on the same team, in addition to all the other pieces that they have. This is a team that I'm going to continue to be behind and I'm going to continue to talk about because I don't feel like they're getting enough recognition for how well they're playing and for how well they can play once we get to the postseason, how good of a team they can be as a real legit championship contender. All right, now we move on to a segment that I haven't actually featured to this point in any of the SL shows that I've done, and this is just going to be kind of me looking at some under-the-radar players throughout the league that are having some notable performances. Now, this doesn't always mean that they're positive, but these are guys that people just for whatever reason aren't talking about, but are having some notable performances throughout the year. And we're going to start on a positive note with OG and Anobi of the Toronto Raptors. Now, there have been a couple of players on this Raptors team that have really stepped up in the absence of Kawhi Leonard, most notably, obviously, Pascal. Scott Siakam, but also Fred Van Vliet, as well as Kyle Lowry, continuing to be a good player before he got injured. But OG and OB, especially from a shooting percentage standpoint, has been amazing for the Raptors to this point. He's defending well, as always. That's his thing. That's what he was supposed to be when he came into the league. But right now, he's shooting almost 60% from the field and over 50% from three on almost four attempts per game. And it's been a huge boost for this team, once again, without Kawhi. And it's really becoming one of the stories of the season for me, how incredible it is that the Raptors just have guys continue to step up like it's pretty incredible how good they still are even though they lost their best player from a championship team last year and a lot of the credit goes to Nick Nurse and the coaching staff as well as guys like Siak and like Ananobi and like Van Fleet continuing to improve because they're just not even close to the same kind of players that they were last year they're all three of those guys are significantly better than they were last year and it's just incredibly impressive to see them continue to improve from game to game and at just 22 years old Ananobi looks like a strong future future piece for this Raptors team in advance of what will be a very interesting 2021 free agency unless he signs an extension with the Raptors before then. And now unfortunately we do have to get to the negative side of the under the radar segment and that is going to be Lowry Markkinen of the Chicago Bulls and this is one of the bigger mysteries of the season to this point in my opinion. He's currently putting up career lows in points, field goal percentage, three-point percentage, and somehow shot attempts as well. I don't understand how a third-year player that has been as successful as Markkinen has been as a scorer through his first two seasons is somehow getting less shots than he did in either of his first two seasons and significantly less than he got last year. And I can already hear Bulls fans screaming that it's Jim Boylan's fault, their head coach, and there has to be plenty of blame on him. But like something else has to be going on here, right? That was a guy that was so promising through his first two seasons somehow suddenly struggling 
so badly? I mean, is there an injury that they're not reporting? Is there something else going on? I mean, I understand that the roster is different now. There's more guys that need shots. You know, Zach Levine's points per game are down. There's more guys on the roster that need shot attempts every game. Kobe White, Thaddeus Young, like they brought in players. Sadoransky is a guy that is going to take up a good amount of offensive responsibility, more so as a playmaker, but he's still going to be there. I understand all those things, but like Lowry is such a talented player and scorer that you have to be more intentional about getting him shot attempts. And I don't understand why that's not the case right now. And I don't really feel like people are talking about this enough, which is why I put him in the under the radar segment. Lowry Markkinen has to get more shots than he is. I understand that he's not scoring the ball very efficiently right now. He had a really nice opening game and since then has not been very good at all. But you have to be intentional about getting players as talented as he is in rhythm and within the flow of the offense and just getting him more shot attempts, please. And last up now, we're gonna end the show as we always do with our headline of the day, where I just kind of look throughout the internet and see an interesting headline that really nobody is talking about that I would like to discuss on the SL show. And today's is D'Angelo Russell says weather played a quote, major part in picking the Warriors over the Timberwolves. I'm gonna read you a quote from the article. D'Lo said, I thought the opportunity with the Timberwolves was amazing after a shoot around with the Warriors on Friday. It was definitely something I was considering very strongly, but when this opportunity with the Warriors came, the weather is way better, so that helped me. I'm sorry, I, I can't help but laugh because, like I understand that these are these are people, right? And you want to live in, in a good situation. You want to live somewhere that you're happy. And if you're comparing the Bay Area to Minnesota, like I 100% understand that. But now in hindsight, like with the issue, the injury issues that the Warriors are having and things like that, it's, it is just a little bit funny that it came down. I'm not saying that this was the deciding factor, but he goes on to talk about this a good amount in the article about how big of a deal it was for him to play somewhere that was warm. And now the Warriors are probably the worst team in the league and he's just kind of going to be the lone ranger for them for the rest of the year. And the Timberwolves are one of the surprise teams in the Western Conference. So it's just kind of funny that that was such a major factor for him that ended up swaying things. But also I'm kind of mad that he ended up going to the Warriors now because I think this Timberwolves team, even though they're fun now, would be so much more fun if they had D'Lo on the roster. I don't know what they would have had to give up in order to make the salaries work and everything to bring him in in a sign and trade. I don't really know what that would have taken. But to have, you know, a resurgent Andrew Wiggins and the Carl Anthony Towns that's playing well and D'Angelo Russell on that roster would have been really fun. And people continue to speculate that potentially there's going to be a trade in the works that's going to send him to Minnesota at some point. But I don't know. It's just funny that he's like, yeah, man, it's warm. I, I wanted to go to Golden State. And I get that there's other basketball reasons, right? Like coming into the season, the Warriors were a better basketball situation for D'Lo than the Timberwolves were. But in hindsight, like it's just a funny headline to say, oh, yeah, you know, the weather played a major part. I really wanted to be in the Bay Area. And it's, it's, it's cold Minnesota. I was in New York last year for the wintertime. I didn't like it. So I want to be in Golden State. I get that. It's just a little bit funny to look back on in hindsight. But that's going to be the end of today's SL show. And I thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'm enjoying so much doing these hopefully every day, honestly, moving forward and kind of incorporating some of the other videos that I would typically do like trade machines and real or fake and stuff like that into these kinds of shows and doing one of these every single day for you guys. But like I said, that is going to be the end of today's video. I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.